What's going on guys? Welcome to another episode. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you the upgraded 370Z headers that I have for my car. So in a previous video, I showed you guys not only how to replace the stock exhaust manifold, but I showed you the difference between the stock manifold and an upgraded long tube setup. Now that was able to give me a little bit more power and it changed the exhaust note from the car. So on the car, I've got some OBX long tube headers with a Gretti Evo GT cat back exhaust system. I swapped out my cat back for an upgraded Evo GT one only because because the piping is larger and it should be able to free up a little bit more power. It's a little bit louder, but it's one trade-off you're gonna have to deal with when you go for a better system. Now, in today's video, I'm gonna be changing out the headers that I have on here, the OBX long tubes, for equal length long tube headers, where the old ones were not equal length. Now, that should not only give me a little bit more power, but it's also gonna change the note of the exhaust system again. Let me show you what the exhausts are. So this here is one of the OEM manifolds off the car. This is what makes every Z and G sound like a trumpet. So the small primaries, the unequal and turbulent runner lengths, and the collector found right at the header are all things that contribute to a restrictive design. These headers may be designed to produce more low end torque than equal length long tubes, but as soon as you get past 2000 RPMs, they're going to be inferior. These are definitely not intended for high RPM use. This set of OBX headers is what I swapped my OEM manifolds to. Now, it's a long tube design, so it eliminates the catalytic converter and downpipe. However, it is in equal length. It's less restrictive since there's no catalyst in the exhaust pipe to slow down the airflow, so you'll see a slight power gain. However, because the runners aren't equal length, they will generate turbulence in the higher RPMs. These headers here from PPE are the best of the best. So they're both long tube and equal length. They're designed for high flow at high RPMs, and they generate a good amount more power over the stock setup. The long runners allow the exhaust pulses to flow from the combustion chamber at a high rate, and when they meet together at the collector, they won't generate anywhere near as much turbulence since all three of the primaries have the same distance to travel. A lot goes into properly engineering a set of long tube equal length headers, and also getting it to fit in the engine bay is another task on its own. That there is the reason why these headers are the best in the biz. In addition to my OBX headers, I had to figure out that I needed to buy O2 sensor extenders since they didn't come with the headers. I had to find that out midway through the install, and then I had to wait for those parts to get shipped and arrive before I can install them. The extended wires were not only a little pricey, but they didn't even come with a sheath to protect the wires from cooking under the heat. The PPE headers are a bit pricier. However, they're not only better quality, but they are a motorsports proven, everything included upgrade. If you guys are going from OEM to aftermarket headers, you wanna see the full install guide, you guys can click the link in the corner since I went over the entire thing in full when I went from the stock manifold to the OBX ones. These beautiful headers are going to make a big difference both audibly and on the dyno. The welds on these headers are by far some of the prettiest things on a car that you can look at. The head flanges are no different. I kinda wanna hang these things up on my wall to show them off they're that nice. It's too bad that this engine needs to breathe and there's no manifolds in the car. I find it easiest to install the O2 sensors prior to installing the headers on the car. Now with that being said, I like to apply a little bit of anti-seize to the threads of the O2 sensors since they will be exposed to a bunch of heat and with some future track days in mind, I don't want my O2 sensors to basically fuse to the headers. I just put a dab on the threads of the sensor and a little bit on the threads of the bung. Now make sure you thread the upstream and the downstream sensors in their correct spot. Torque both of the sensors to the manifold to the OEM spec of 37 foot-pounds. Ensure you have your car raised enough to give yourself enough space to work underneath since these headers are pretty bulky. Then go underneath the car with the manifolds and fish them up towards the cylinder head. With a new gasket resting on the studs, slide the head flange over top. Then the six nuts that fasten the old manifold up to the studs, reuse them and tighten them by hand. The upper three manifold studs will be pretty easily accessible, so start off with threading the nuts onto them by hand. Then continue by snugging up the lower three. An assortment of ratcheting tools, sockets, and extensions will be your best friends here. Threading a couple nuts onto some studs doesn't sound like a difficult challenge, but when you're working with a very limited amount of space, it can be quite frustrating. It gets even worse when you have to use a torque wrench to tighten everything. Try to torque every one of the manifold nuts up to 22 foot-pounds. Now found on the other end of the manifold, we'll find the flange that connects it to the cat back section of the exhaust system. The headers do come with replacement gaskets and hardware. Now prior to this, I had installed stainless hardware and new gaskets since I just replaced the cat back, so I'll be reusing those and I'll use the PPE ones as extras. 
Next up, we need to connect the O2 sensor wire extenders. So the one end connects to the factory wiring harness at the top, backside of the engine bay, right behind the throttle body. With the other end of the extender harness routed safely towards the sides of the transmission, you can connect the wires and connect it up to the upstream slash primary O2 sensor socket. The secondary sensor hooks up in the same location as before, so there's nothing that needs to be done there. And then just repeat the same thing for the driver's side header. Now the only difference is going to be that you're going to have to disconnect the steering column U-joint. And it's really easy, I've shown you guys how to do this before. Just zip it out, move the steering column out of the way, and then you can go ahead and install the driver's side. And now's the moment you guys have been waiting for. Here comes the first cold start with the full new exhaust system. This thing sounds so sick. Listen to how deep it is. If this thing drives and puts down power as good as it sounds, oh boy, ha, I'll be a happy man. Oh guys, this setup is freaking awesome. So this here is the full PPE long tube Gretti Evo GT cat back exhaust setup paired together. Um, I'm not gonna lie, it is a little bit more on the louder side of things. This is definitely louder than my OBX and Nvidia cat back setup. There is a little bit of drone down around 3000 RPMs, but I'm putting money down that that's the cat back section. If I wanted to have something a little bit quieter, I could probably find something, but what's the point of that? <laughs> it is a little bit more on the pricier side of things for headers, but when you consider that you can sell your test pipes, it comes with the O2 sensor extenders, and these are track proven, you're not gonna have to replace these because you've got any problems. Guys, it's a no-brainer. It makes sense why someone would want this setup. But I gotta say, the most important and impressive thing about this setup is how it sounds. <laughs> some guys spend a ton of money in their cars and they get like the best of the best parts I get it it makes sense <laughs> it's powerful it sounds fantastic you can't go wrong with this so if you guys upgrade to a set of PPE long tube equal length headers along with an upgraded cat back that has larger piping than stock even larger than some of the smaller stuff like my Nvidia setup you guys will notice a huge power gain, especially in the top end. So the last time that I dynoed this thing, it put down 318 wheel horsepower. The only powertrain things that I've changed since are the headers and the cat back. I'm really hoping to make more power. Any ideas? So I did get a retune through admin tuning after installing the headers and cat back on the car. 
Monsef, my tuner, brought to my attention that the one primary O2 sensor was not working, which is why on my phone you can see that AFR Bank 2 is stuck at 14.7, where it should be hovering around 14 just like Bank 1. That also means that whenever I do a pull, the AFRs, instead of them being stuck at 14.74, they should be hovering around 12 to 13, which is why I also didn't make as much power as I could have had. With that being said, I didn't have another O2 sensor on hand and we couldn't even get a replacement one for that day. So we had to make do with the power that it did make on the 91 octane fuel. So guys, we just made 334 wheel and 266 torque. Now that is pretty much what this car makes crank now at the wheels. So I gotta say that's pretty damn good. I wanna change out the primary O2 sensor on the driver side because I've got an issue with it and I think that's why it's not making more power, but that's gonna probably be for next season. Um, winter's coming, I gotta put the car away and I'm really shooting that we can aim for 340. If you guys wanna find more information about the headers or the cab back, you guys can find more information in the description box. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.